I gotta mute. Can everybody mute themselves? Um, yeah. And so part of the benefit of all those four R's or the purpose of the four R's at Melt is, is not just that there's four R's, but it's to rebalance your nervous system, rehydrate the tissue. So it's not just grabbing on itself and then um, release tension, release old pathways and reconnect us to kind of how our body perceives our pain, our process and all that kind of stuff. So like in the foot treatment stuff, you do the foot treatment and that is a complete treatment. That is not just a treatment for the foot, but it actually does all four R's and truly so does the hand treatment. I'll say this, the hand treatment works everything from the navel essentially up. So it's forearms, it's um, lungs and everything that does with your hands for sure is, is head and chest and um and that would include heart and so and that i would say there is a somatic connection to melt that that you can really connect to the emotions of movement as well so or the emotions that get caught up in the body so somatic is that balance of kind of uh, touch through emotion and kind of through the rest of the body and so when we move the tissue we move our emotions we move our not just our physical body, but we move our neuro neurological body as well. So we're gonna do a hand treatment um, just with a large soft ball. And so if you, have a, if you have a watch, go ahead and take your watch off. And also I'm gonna roll my sleeves up because I'm gonna get busy. And I have one more, I wish I should have prepared, but I have one more, um, let me take my bracelet off because we're gonna do a roll down the forearm. If you've had, especially if you have lung, heart, neck, shoulder, wrist, elbow, inflammatory illnesses of any sort, whether inflammatory short term, like if you've had a cold or if you've had a flu or anything like that, that's an inflammation in the, in the body. And remember, just because your lungs, which are huge in your body, one of the biggest internal organs you have, if your lungs are inflamed, your rest of your body is going to kind of be inflamed also because not are your just are your lungs, your lungs, inhale, exhale, but they're also purifying your system. They're processing blood. They're helping the connection between the, the blood and the breath and oxygen and deoxygenation. So if they're not moving well, you're not moving well. And so, and so when people are like, oh, I, I, I kind of, I have a cough, but I'm, I'm feeling just fine. It's like, okay, well you have a cough and your body's processing all that, that you're dealing with, but you're not back to normal yet. You might be feeling fine, but your body's still going through a lot. So then some people get stumble and then they stumble into a secondary or a tertiary or a third illness because They've never really healed from the first one and they've just kind of left gaps open and they're healing and then they get sick again. And that's a very limited way. And I'm sure Bev understands that, but a very limited way to explain that you can get a secondary issue, even though you're kind of well from your first issue. And so it's always just trying to opportunity, not get those opportunistic um um viruses and bacteria and that kind of stuff in our system that will come in and just kind of take advantage of us for that thing's sake. So we're a very strong system. And I've always said that our system is doing its best every single day to take care of us, but it's our opportunity to kind of not try to outsmart our body, but to work with our body to help support our body so that our body can be at its best at any given time. So let's start with a hand treatment. And as of always we do, and I'm up on a table today because, because of videoing, if I'm on the ground, then it's a little bit more challenging to see. So if you wanna be up on something, you're more than welcome on the ground. It's not that difficult to do it on, on the ground. It may just be, I don't know. It may just be difficult for wherever. So figure out where you wanna go and let's get going. So again, we're gonna do a baseline movement. I'm gonna separate my feet because I have my ankles crossed. So I'm not compressing any blood flow or anything like that. Sit up nice and tall and just take a couple of deep breaths and just kind of notice your breathing at first. Notice if you're breathing up and down, like, so I know I'm exaggerating, but if like, if you feel like you're growing taller and bringing your shoulders up when you're breathing and then dropping them down, that's actually backwards breathing. That's a stressed breathing. And most of us can breathe like that throughout the day. If you can kind of settle in quiet and notice your breath either coming through your rib cage or your belly, or 
Here's the secret sauce, even the floor of the pelvis. You're breathing much more connected. So that floor of the pelvis is the lowest part of our breath in a sense, because that's our lowest diaphragm and our neck. So if you can feel the outward movement of your breath and the up and the downward movement of your breath, as well as the front and back movement of your breath, you're really on the money as far as your breathing goes. Very often we feel one, but not necessarily all three. And then just a couple of deep breaths. Just notice what's going on with your breathing. Maybe you even feel like size and shape. Maybe one area opens up more fully than another. And if there's any pain, any tenderness, any position in the body that feels unconnected or disconnected, those are areas of stuck stress on the body as well. All right, so with that, just breathing, 10 deep breaths can really change your mindset, change your body alignment. Let's take those forearms and bring those forearms together. So I want my elbows to come together, my hands to come together, my fingers to come together. And so just be specific for a moment. I'm just turning to the side so you can see me just a little bit. And for me, you may not be able to see the front, but for the side, I can feel some tension in my chest, not terrible, just a little tension and a little bit of pressure down the outside of my right hand. So I'm not, and down into my right side of my neck. So just a little bit of pressure. And then from there, take that deep breath, hold it in, see if it's harder to keep those elbows together. And then as you exhale, does that change the position at all? Do you have any more pressure? Take a deep breath in again, and then exhale. Just the simple act of breathing. And then let's open the hands. So again, we always wanna open the hands to see, do we have tenderness down the forearms? Maybe we've been on the computer or maybe you're practicing piano all day. Are our hands like balls or are they flat more like T's or are they curled up? Maybe your thumb is in or your pinkies are in or whatever. Now, again, this can be a matter of strength and or mobility and just the inability to do it because your muscles are short and weak on some of these. So again, one more time, open those hands up, notice, and then let's close the hands together. When you actually then drop the hands all the way down to your sides, uh, does your body just kind of take a thank you breath? And it's like, I don't like being in that kind of tension. Let's then see when we do a reassess how that is at the end. So we're gonna start with the ball and we're gonna take the ball, nice little cue from Anna drinking her water. I don't know what she's drinking, but she's drinking something. We'll take the ball in our hand and, and just we're just going to press the ball, give it a squeeze with the right hand, give it a squeeze with the left hand. So again, you're just taking the ball and just trying to find tension and pressure. You're trying to notice if you have more grip in your right hand than your left or your left hand than your right. You can close your hands because sometimes our, our space around us distracts us enough so we don't pay attention. It, for me, it feels relatively equal. I have more tension in my right hand than my left. It is my writing hand. And from there, we're going to take the hand and we're going to go point and press. So you're going to point and press each finger. So you're going to take that index finger, push the point of the index finger and press the, the tip of the finger into the ball about three times and then point and press the next finger. And I'm just kind of holding my arm in space. You can rest your hand against something if you need to. And then the next one, and you can also do this face down. So if you're having a difficult time controlling the ball, you can hold it in place, whatever you need to do. So it's not like right or wrong. I try to not to put my elbow and bend my body into it, just sit up nice and tall. And then thumb. And then let's go in between the fingers. Let's give a little position. Let's open up the spaces now in between the knuckles. Give it a nice good squeeze, take a breath. And then again, exhale. Now the nice thing about the smaller balls is they are smaller for the knuckles. So if people do have arthritis or anything like that, that can be nice to have a smaller ball go between. But if you can tolerate this, you are opening that space up between there. And it's one of the hardest things to see on people is just those kind of gnarled knuckles and, and or the spaces are all misshapen. And then the next finger. So again, pull those fingers in and release and pull the fingers in 
and release. One more time, pull those fingers in, squeeze and release. Let's go thumb and index finger. Remember that space, we're gonna to try to get it in between that space and then hug the ball and then give it a squeeze and release and give it a squeeze and release. Let's do position point pressing. We're gonna start with position point one in the center of the hand. Just press down, trying to find tolerable pressure. Now again, watch that the shoulder doesn't come into the ear, but that you relax and press in, exhale. One more time, exhale and come back in. Let's do the index finger, press down. Remember, you're looking for kind of that whitening of the knuckle. Go to the next finger, the whitening of that knuckle. And then again, exhale, press down. If you've been on the computer all day, the phone all day, the, the your Blackberry, huh? not your Blackberry, your iPod, your iPhone, whatever you're on, your hands are gonna get a little bit more tired. Take your hand there, fingers are relaxed on the ground. And then release. And then again, now position point. So that was position point three. Position point four is that carpal tunnel. And that's a very neutral space, a very small space. A lot of nerves come in there, a lot of veins, a lot of muscle, all that kind of stuff. It's going into the hand, a lot of narrow channel there to get swollen from work, from overuse, from misuse, from lack of use, all kinds of stuff. And then let's go to position point five on the outside, just underneath the thumb. Press down. We'll press down and hold, take a deep breath. And then again, press down again. Now, once again, on that carpal tunnel space, that can be tender and pressure and have a lot of pressure for a lot of people. So, so relax on that air if you need to. So I'm pressing down about 50% onto position point five. I'm going to keep my thumb, or sorry, my index finger, middle finger on the um. Um, table, and I'm just going to move my hand back and forth. If you're having a hard time controlling, you can always put that top hand and use that top hand to create more pressure or more even pressure. I'm not really doing much with my top hand. I'm just using it as a guide. Press back and forth. Remember, breathing is always essential. Exhaling. Remember, we expel all kinds of stuff through our breath. Fat, we expend toxins, whatever, breakdown of cellular matter, oxygen, carbon dioxide, all kinds of stuff. And we want that out of the body and we want to be able to transfer that information. Go ahead and pause at position point five, take your pressure off, put your pressure back on and move that thumb back and forth. This is really one of the more simpler ways. If anybody's got arthritis, that's a real gentle way to go. Or we're gonna press, like you're kind of rubbing something off just underneath that tissue. And then, and then kind of, I'm gonna hold my table in place and just kind of push that, push that ball around. You're not making balls of Play-Doh. You're just kind of pushing that ball into the hand. And then pause. And then let's rinse the hand. So we're gonna go from knuckle, not all the way down the hand, but from knuckle to nail, press down, Press down, press down, press down. Again, a lot of times people ask. Also on this one, we're going all the way to the base of the hand and then to the thumb. People ask one more time on the thumb, then let's go back index finger. Why do you rinse the hand down and don't rinse both hands simultaneously or don't rinse the palm? It's because you're rinsing the palm and rinsing the top of the hand anyway while you're rolling the ball. All right. So let's take the ball, stick with your fingertips and you're gonna roll all the way to the heel of the hand. Roll to the heel of the hand. Now you can go try to find space. You've got possibly two or three spots you can put on the wrist and get it to the elbow one more time. And then we're gonna do once last time, we're gonna press only to the point where we're just past the wrist and you're gonna flex and extend the wrist. I've got about 50% pressure on my hand, if that's too much pressure for you, then don't do it. This is gonna help create some tension and some release of tissue through a sheer force. Two more and last one. Let's just now do friction. And then you can go up and down, side to side, each one of the fingertips, whatever you'd like to do, okay? All right, go ahead and pause just for a second. I'm gonna put the ball down just to roll away. Let's put our forearms back together again. Open up those hands. For me, for sure, my right hand feels a lot better. And even if my cupping isn't better, I just feel easier going down that hand, just open right up again. Less tension in my neck on this side. This is the side I had some tension. 
and breathing. Now my elbows are even already staying better together. Go ahead and close those hands and let's do the second side. Let's start with that point and press, point and press. So I'm doing this so you can see, but you do not have to do it towards your camera at all, but it's hold the ball in your thumb and, and just press against the tip of the finger and the pad of the finger, and then go to the next finger. My apologies for that creepy Band-Aid. I didn't change my Band-Aid. I had a new slicer for my carrots and took off, not quite the tip of my finger, but um, more than let's just say the carrot. And then I had to reset because I was still making mashed potatoes and did not want skin in mashed potatoes. So, and then the next finger, I started cooking with um, like gloves, not surgical gloves, but you know, like tight gloves. Cause then I don't have to wash my hands as much for crying out loud. I love it. I can, I can put my fingers into the meat and I can actually make my meatloaf. It's awesome. It's kind of like, like a kid playing with Play-Doh. It's the best, just playing with food. All right, thumb, point and press. Good. And then pause and let's take those fingers, grab it in the knuckle and squeeze like you're squirting it out. And then again, squeeze and then do the next one and squeeze. Now I do find, and maybe it's because I, you know, because I wear a ring on my finger a lot, that these two fingers tend to be less mobile. Maybe I use my, my um, um, ring finger less than any other finger, squeeze. I don't think I'm using my middle finger as much except for slicing it off. That's maybe that's part of the reason why I sliced it off a little bit. Good. And then thumb and index go right there in that little pad, grab your fingers around it and squeeze like you're gonna pop it up. And I, it's a little crampy right there, a little tight right there. <laughs> Didn't notice that before. All right, so let's put the ball on the ground, position point one or on the, the table, position point one, press down. Take a deep breath. And if nothing else, those breaths are to your advantage. Because I promise you, you're not breathing all day long efficiently. So let's go into position point two underneath the first knuckle, release, and then press down. And then go to the second knuckle, release, and press down again. And so even if you, a couple of times a day, overly consciously work on your breathing, you're going to get some benefit out of it very good for you. So, and then it just keeps reminding you to breathe and breathe efficiently and breathe consistently. We're going to position point four underneath the base of the pinky, exhale. And remember there's a little carpal tunnel area right there. And then we're gonna press down and relax the hand. Don't like get grabby with the hand. And then position point five, Press down. And if it's too much pressure, remember it's always about tolerable pressure, not tolerable pain. And then release. Press down again. And then let's just move that ball back and forth again. Middle finger, maybe your index finger, maybe the other hand. Give it that nice even glide back and forth. Remember, you're just moving the tissue. It's like you're making bread, kneading something in. Kind of like a masseuse would come in and use the heel of their hand, maybe on your back. And then pause at the base of the thumb. And then you're gonna move that thumb back and forth. I've got about 50% pressure on my thumb. And remember, the more you do this, the better and more connected you're gonna feel to the movement itself. Go ahead and pause, and then just move that ball back and forth, side to side maybe around in circles. And then again, remember, this is also where you can do this kind of double where you can rub it together too. If that is more efficient for you, maybe you're at work or something like that or sitting in your car or something like that. Go ahead and pause. Let's rinse down the forearm from your fingers, tips to the base of your elbow. And you can kind of feel that nice motion. And it's good for the shoulder, nice mobility for the shoulders, giving that shoulder an opportunity to move, maybe a little movement for the chest and the back, especially maybe if you've gone through a little bit of cold or, or have a little bit of upper respiratory something. 
Good, one more time, press down. Remember, we're gonna stop right behind the wrist and you're just going to lift and lower. Now you could do this on your arm. Like I said, you don't have a table with you and you just wanna do this someplace, you could do this on your arm. It is easier on a table. A little bit of pressure here, about 50%. And 50% is one of those things you have to kind of negotiate with yourself and learn what 50% of full pressure is. Pause and then release. And then let's do rinse. Rinse the pinky finger, the ring finger, middle finger, index finger, and thumb. Let's go back. You can go on the outside and on the inside, or you could just go right over the top, whatever works better. Good, and then let's do friction. I do find when I work going pause, I do find when I work my upper body, I do tend to breathe a lot more. Partly I'm moving my arms, so I'm kind of encouraging movement of my lungs anyway. And then it just kind of feels like it's opening itself up too. So whether it's because I'm doing it as an incur as a as a result or as an encouragement for, turns out it doesn't matter because you're breathing and breathing is good. The more you can breathe, the more efficient you can breathe, the better you feel when you breathe, the better you're gonna feel anyway. It's gonna be good nonetheless. So let's put the forearms together. Woo, that feels nice. A lot better than it did before. Again, you're wanting to see how that tension is. I'm like so amazed today. And then I'm gonna open up those hands a lot more level, not as much tension in the forearms. Breathing, my neck a lot better. Big deep breath, exhale and close those arms. Elbows stay together a lot nicer. And then releasing my hands a lot less of that uh, feeling when I release my hands. Good. Just move those shoulders nice, Beth. And then just kind of feel like you just kind of feel ready to go. Maybe you're a little bit more alert even. Again, if all of this only had to do with just getting you to breathe a little bit more, I think we would be ahead of the game anyway. So if this is just a way to play and get yourself to breathe some and just get yourself to move your arms, what the heck? It's the best thing for you. Most people don't move in these types of directions and then you just get to get stuck. All right, we're going to do kind of that three point. It's called the 50 second facelift. I think it's just about kind of moving these little limp spots, these little tension holders that we have on our body. I'm going to take my glasses off. And if you want, you can use your elbow and press. This is a great thing as a student, as a writer. And if you want to look like you're a ponderer of information, it's a great way to go too, because make sure it looks like you're thinking fondly of something. So bone behind the ear, you're going to place the heel of the hand up against that. Let the fingers rest on the head. And we're just going to go in. I'm starting in a counterclockwise circle. Again, I'm not trying to put a ton of pressure and I can go slow and just, it just feels good behind my ear. And then I'm gonna go clockwise. Now if you start picking up some hair in there, make a little hairball for yourself, just be careful. And then just add pressure just as it's comfortable. And then pause. And then as you can, just change positions and you're just gonna move the tissue up and down. So I'm not moving the ball, I'm moving the tissue up and down, just kind of getting the tissue I'm a little stuck back there, I feel like. And you could do this without the ball and just move the tissue. See how I'm just kind of moving my skin, but I'm not moving my um, hand so much. Pause, take a big deep breath. Good, and come off. We're gonna go to that line right there. You've got the ear flap, you put your finger right there, you're gonna feel the jaw line. So your jaw line comes in right there, just above that, there's a, like a hole right there. Go ahead and take the ball. Again, you're gonna place your, your ball on your head, kind of connect it into your hand and roll. Again, I'm going clockwise to begin and then pause, the pressure and then counterclockwise, not like we're unwinding it, it's just a different direction of connection. And then pause, and then a little bit of twisting on that tissue. And then pause, and then release. And then we're gonna go, so we've got sphenoid right in here. So we're not gonna go 
on the temple itself. So we've got like kind of like where you where your glasses line above your ear. You're gonna go just into that spot, but not into that hole of your where your sphenoid bone is. Just kind of go just below that, kind of on the cheekbone, around. Again, I'm leaning my head into my hand partly so I relax. And so I just kind of let it all happen. I can go slower. I can go a little faster, pause, go the other direction. It just kind of feels good. If I stay up, I tend to kind of want to roll a ball on my head and pause and then come back up. I'm just going to twist the skin right there. And then pause. And I'm just going to go right to the center of my forehead, not to the middle. Well, I've got the middle line from the middle of my nose. I'm just going to stay to the right of that and then just have my hand on the, on the ground. And again, fingertips here. And then so the heel of my hand is just to the right of the center of my forehead. And I'm moving that ball around, moving my forehead. And again, I'm using my own ability to find my own pressure. I'm not shoving this into my face. I'm just, and I'm not trying to twist my skin too much. Pause. Go the other direction, breathing, and it should just feel good, moving the skin around, moving the tissue around, and pause. Big deep breath, and release. Let's go up through the other side. So now I'm on the other side. And if you want to spend more time on one side, you're more than welcome to. And I've got my hand, so behind my ear, heel of my hand, hand on the ground, and then circle around. Now again, try not to relax, I try not to relax, try not to relax guys, try and relax, which means you need to breathe. Remember, relaxation isn't just a desire, it's actually an action. And so relaxation is like a verb, you have to do something, pause. Put yourself into a position of, of relaxation, breathe to allow for relaxation, and kind of think relaxing things. Think of how much easier it is. Give yourself words of softening. Just pause. Let's come up and just twist the tissue. And we're just opening the tissue in different ways. It's not one over the other better. It's just kind of combination of giving yourself opportunity. So again, we're going to that ear hole. And then again, sinking the heel of the hand in. And then you can see this kind of on the side of my head. I'm not really in my ear. I'm not totally on my jaw, but I'm right there because we move our jaws a lot. I do all day. And that whole muscular area can get tense. Remember, with melt, we're moving more than just um, the ball on the tissue. You're working for joint hydration. And I don't, I still don't, I haven't ever heard of like a maxilla jaw joint um, reconnection or replacement, but there probably could be. I'm sure there's, I'm sure it's out there. Pause. Let's do that twisty back and forth. And then let's go up one, up to that sphenoid right where that kind of that eye line is. Watch out for your eyes, circle around clockwise. Breathe. And then counterclockwise. This feels good just outside the eyes, not interfering with your eye at all. Pause. Come back up and do that little pinchy kind of twisty. You don't have to go too hard, you're real close to the eye and release. And then one more. So we've got that kind of line that seam down the center of our head. You don't see it anymore for most people. You're just gonna go to the left of that now. And this is the thinker pose. Oh, I've got to think about so many things. And a roll or like, oh, you've been on the computer all day. Your forehead is furrowed. Pause, go the other direction. Me, this is one of the best. And we might have to roll our hands after we're done with this. <laughs> and then come back up. I'm just coming up so I can do that slow spin back and forth, that twisting of the tissue. And this is kind of the fun part. This one makes me feel like I'm a 
esthetician. You know, I don't even play one on TV. Go ahead and pause and release. Now, I'll tell you this, my face just kind of feels like, uh, it's kind of like, it's just kind of feels like it's not, there's no tension in. I'm just going to take my hands and gently, like I've got a, some, something soft, like a tissue, and I'm just going to rain my hands down my face, down the center, down my neck, down the outsides, and just go, just like a esthetician would take your, their hands down. Now, I don't know how much facial costs for everybody. For me, it's kind of expensive. <laughs> and so you get a little opportunity to not have to go get a facial, but to give one to yourself. So you can spray some lavender on yourself or some eucalyptus, or go take a shower right away, maybe put some grapefruit soap in the shower or something like that. Just go ahead and sit up for a second, nice and tall. So we're no longer have a ball in our hand. We no longer, my face just, I'll tell you this, I haven't done this in a while. And I feel just like, it's like all the nerves are awake, but at the same time, they're not fighting each other. They're just feeling, there's this calm over my entire face. I even made Beverly yawn. It's so amazing. So anyway, go ahead and relax. <laughs> And then let your arms go. And then maybe she was yelling for help or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. And so just nice and tall to sit. Close your eyes. And let's breathe into our rib wall again. Put my glasses back on. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. We're going to breathe a full 10 times. I know it'll take about a minute and a half. And exhale, you can have your eyes open or closed. You choose. If you need to re-pop, re-center yourselves in your posture, so you're noticing your body's acquiring a new ease in your balance. And noticing now if your rib cage can fill up a little easier, if you feel that top and that bottom breath a little bit more even. And it's not that one works against the other or fights the other. All of them should just kind of happen. Four more nice long deep breaths. And then breathing open. Big breath, exhale. One more deep breath. And exhale. Let's take our arms up and overhead reach. And exhale through. Circle those arms up and overhead reach. And exhale through. One more time. Reach those arms up and overhead. Lengthen. Exhale through. As you are where you're sitting, rotate to your right. So place your left hand on your right knee. Look over your right shoulder. Try not to chase around with your knees. Keep your knees wide. Breathe so you feel that rotation even into the belly. Exhale, come center and rotate to your left. Exhaling, big breath. Inhale, feel that diagonal pull across the belly. Exhale, inhale. Take your hands either behind you and hold the chair that you're on or interlace your fingers behind you. So if you're not sitting in a chair, you're sitting on the ground, pull your arms back and let's nod the head. Or if you can hold the chair, hold the chair and just nod the head. Now remember, you're going to your own best range. This nodding of the head gets us out of that just stuck head position that we get into while we're looking at the computer or a book or just sitting for a long period of time, flossing the nerve. Maybe you feel like you get more range of motion than I'm feeling like I do. Wow, it's all about me today. <laughs> and then hit center and then look over your right shoulder. Look over your left. Make sure your eyes are moving too. So you're really rebalancing that vestibular system. Look to your left. Look to your right. One more time. Look to your left. Back to center. Look up to your right, look down, bring your chin to your shoulder, look up, 
bring your chin to the ceiling, look down. The more ways we can move that head, the more ways our body can adjust. Remember where the head goes, therefore the body also goes. Oh, that wasn't me who said that. That was some smart person, I don't know, like a Socrates or something like that. One more time. And then back to center and then look up and then back down. Just think of those stuck spots that might be in your neck. If you've got stuck spots in your neck and those nerves that connect to those stuck spots are also keeping your body from moving as efficiently as it can. One more time, look up and look down. Let's roll the shoulders up, back and around. You can keep the arms long and let them almost act like weights. Roll in, roll up, roll back and down. Really find a full range of motion. And one more time. Good, let's roll the shoulders oppositionally, one round and the other. Remember also, one of those cool things about the shoulders, if your right shoulder is hurting or left or vice versa, Move the other one. It's kind of like your eyes. One's going to move the other one for it. And so you might as well give that opportunity. So if you're if you're always moving your right shoulder, move your left shoulder independently and get used to finding ways that you can move your shoulders. All right, one more time. Interlace your fingers now, though, but in the front and take your arms up over your head. Big deep breath. Exhale, bring your hands, interlace them, press down, bring your arms up, round your back, roll in. Inhale, up and sit up, take your arms up and then take your arms down. And we are done and done. Good. You can always recheck your baselines and see if they're still good. I feel like mine's still really nice. You can check your ball and see if the ball feels like a nice grip in your hands. Feels like a good solid grip still. Now, obviously if something goes off, go back to gliding and then some friction and just see if you can go back to, or do you can just go back to breathing? All right. Okay, fantastic guys. Let me do this. Okay.